Hey, mm -hmm. Matthias, how are you doing? Uh, I'm really good. Nothing much. I'm uh, off tour right now. So uh, having the first weeks off uh, in in a very long time. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. Yeah, great. So let's start to talk uh, about uh, endocells because you just came back from the European tour. How was the tour? Yeah. Ah, oh, it was really good. You know, uh, you know, when we uh, just before the tour, we were thinking that you know there's not gonna be any people over there because there were kind of like small bands touring, uh, and uh, but yeah, when we got there, it actually turned out to be really great. There was a uh, a lot of really good shows on that tour. There were just a couple of days that were a little bit not that good, but uh, ninety percent of the gigs were were really good. So I'm uh, really happy. Nice. Nice. What was the the gig that was uh, the most uh, the most amazing for some weird reason? <laughs> <laughs> well, I really liked the last show that, that was in France. That was one of the best shows on this tour, in my opinion. Uh, there was a really good one also because there was a festival in the middle in Poland. This uh, festival I wanted to go to for many years called uh, Summer Dying Loud. That, that would have been really cool, but there was some technical problems that, yeah, that wasn't, <laughs> that made it, you know, you know a little bit uh, stressful and a little bit like I uh, took away the, you know, the the good things out of the show. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I think it, the, the last show in France was really good. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. So you release uh, the new album in January, last January? As in Garden, yeah. so in, in terms, uh, what can you tell about its genesis and the lyrics? Uh, how do you mean? Uh, about the 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 how did you uh, work on the album? <laughs> yeah, this album was actually a really uh, how to say like a new thing for me because uh, I usually uh, I write mostly when I'm when I'm traveling. For some reason, you know, because I, before this album, I sort of needed to be in a really, really dark place when, you know, when I, uh, to write something that I'm really happy about. So, uh, you know, uh, so uh, usually it's been me just like being really, really fed up with traveling or like on a train or in, in the airplane, like really crowded, overcrowded train or something like that to sort of induce this kind of state of mind that I can write something good but you know um, this album we recorded it during the pandemic so uh, there was no traveling there was no nothing I was just at home I was feeling good I was exercising I was eating healthy I was you know out in the woods all the time with my dog and this kind of thing so I was I couldn't sort of induce the right state of mind so in me for me it was a little bit difficult to get started but I sort of had to force myself to write something like uh, every day I tried to uh, to write a little bit. And uh, at some point, everything like just opened up and then I was really happy with with what came out of the pen. So it was a little bit different for me, you know, than, than usual, because, yeah, as I said, I was as, that's maybe why it's kind of like a positive album in, in that kind of sense. Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, many bands wrote music during the pandemic yes. and uh, for many is kind of different or well, it was different for everyone in general but uh, yeah when we when we talk about music uh, th there are albums that you can really hear that the pandemic have an yeah. effect on it uh, and then there are those that uh, you cannot really feel but the, the the working process was different. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. About the artwork, I really like the, the cover of the album. Um, who is the artist and uh, how the this piece of art, because it's a piece of art, came came out? Well, he's called uh, Adrien Besson. He did, uh, from France, he did uh, also... The cover for the album before uh he's actually working 
for uh, the record company. And it seems uh, it turned out that he was a big fan of And Oceans from, you know, the old albums. And uh, he just, uh, when we released the first comeback album, he just uh, asked that he was, uh, can I do this album artwork? I really, really want to do it. You know, it would be really like a big honor to uh, to work on this album. And then it is. And we were like, yeah, of course, this is, yeah, everything you've done so far looks really cool. So, so why not? And yeah, and uh, so we decided it was like a no brainer to use him on this album as well. So uh, when we uh, started writing the album and we actually had some, some demos for some songs ready. And I also had, I think I had uh, maybe four, four lyrics done. When I sent the package to him with like with the uh, with the demos and with uh, the lyrics, and I also explained a little bit about the lyrics and uh, the concept of the album, and uh, then uh, he just like sent me a, like a, a really like crude first version of of the album if it's going in the right directions, and uh, I was immediately I saw lots of those small details you know even though it was just like a preview version it was uh, full of small details already and uh, stuff out of the lyrics that i wrote so uh, yeah it was it was really cool and uh, yeah everything sort of is connected so when you when you check that the album cover and yeah, and you read the lyrics there's like everything is <laughs> everything is there yeah and yeah. Um, yeah i i really like the 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 art cover it's i don't know it reminds me some paints from church and yeah, so yeah. It's, i i i just was i was watching yesterday uh, a program on was it prime maybe yeah. i don't remember which one of those things uh, but yeah and uh, there there were some art things and uh, then uh, I just I just uh, was thinking yeah that how a album cover can be so um, kind of relate with uh, old art and uh, the, the beauty of, uh, of the art yeah and the album is yes. great <laughs> in, in, in really great you did a great job so congratulations mm. for yeah. that yeah no, you know, that was sort of my plan as well, that I told him that I want something that looks looks a little bit like uh, like something from a church, you know, like a, like a painting from a church. But uh, I didn't want to want it to be sure, like which religion it is, you know, <laughs> so yeah. I wanted it to be sort of like an anonymous kind of uh, religion. That you know, but it's it's in that that anonymous religions church that would be the you know the altar painting or something like that. So yeah, yeah. So so you're definitely right about that. Yeah, uh, let's talk about Fintroll because uh, you are going on tour in Japan next month. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So how do you feel about this upcoming tour? Yeah, it's gonna be nice. You know. Uh, We've played a couple of times before in, in Japan and they've always been really cool trips. So I'm really looking forward to this one. And now there's also a new city. I've never been to Nagoya before. So that's going to be going to be nice to see that city. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be awesome. There's going to be some really cool gigs, I think. Yeah. And uh, you released the last album with Finn Troller uh, in 2020. Uh, yeah. Are you working on new music or? Yeah, well, Fintral has never been this band that can really, you know, write when we're on tour and we have been on tour a lot lately. Yeah. So, uh, so we haven't really started, but I've I've heard some new riffs and and some new some new ideas. So, uh, I don't so think in uh, the future yeah. something will come. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was not the, the last album, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you have been uh, actually very busy since 2020 yeah. with Fintro, all the time touring. Uh, so, yeah, it's not easy when you are on tour too. Yeah, no, it's, exactly. It, yeah, you you need the time to be in the studio and uh, do, do your things. Uh, 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and uh, and also, you know, you need to be home a couple of couple of weeks before you know you can start writing stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you take care of your voice while you are on tour? <laughs> oh, I've actually. Well, I'm gonna knock on some wood here, but I uh, yeah, I'm I'm really happy because I've been like sort of blessed with a with a, a easy going voice you know uh, and i've never really had to take care that much of it and uh, and uh, since i don't really like warm up that much either so uh, usually when you're on tour i use the sound check as a, as the warm up and then i just try to keep my voice warm until the show so uh <laughs> that that's sort of how it works but um but um, uh, but yeah, no. Um, uh, I have noticed that it's uh, well lately. If I get a little bit sick, then my voice is a little bit gonna be a little bit harder. So now, if I'm feeling like that's flu or something coming when I'm on tour, then I need to then I need to take care of it a little bit and uh, yeah. just keep everything warm, you know, with a, like a, with like a scarf or something, and just try to drink drink like honey and tea and stuff like that so yeah yeah so anyway, ginger the 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 basic things uh, to take yeah. care of voice yeah 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 but i've usually it's been it's been fine i never really had any problems with it so yeah and about the gear what gear do you use what gear yeah um how, how do you mean like uh, what kind of a microphone do you use uh, and so on? Well, it, it depends on, but uh, I have, I have this, uh, this, this custom made microphone nowadays that I use. So, uh, but it's uh, in, in a, like in the, the base of it is like from a, it's a sure microphone in there. And it's uh, this kind of, how to say like, Elvis style of microphone that is just built into the custom rig that I have, uh, and also I use uh, Audix microphone as the as the second one. So uh, nothing nothing out of ordinary actually, but uh, but yeah, the the microphone itself, uh, the my how to say like the the fancy custom made one is has got a, a lot of other things in it, but the microphone itself is is just a sure microphone. Yeah, um, you are also a vocal coach, and yeah. uh, you st you work with uh, Rock Camp School of Rock and uh, Metal. Yeah, uh, how do you feel about this? How, how is to be a coach, uh, a vocal coach uh, for uh, other people? And uh, yeah. how, how much uh, students do you have at the moment? Well, right now I don't really have that much because I've been on tour, so I haven't had time to to teach much. Uh, but uh, now, when I have some time, I'm gonna have. Well, I have a also like a private kind of company that I do myself private lessons. Was there and that they is... shout your uh, lunch off out out safely? Yeah, is that yeah exactly? <laughs> yeah, that yeah shout, shout your lungs out safely. Yeah, that's my that's my sort of. When I work for when I'm like at home and I can do this kind of um, distance, distance lessons and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, um, and uh, but now now right now I have uh, two students on that, so that's not much right now. But I haven't really had time to book anything yeah. anyway. So and I now it's sort of vacation anyways for me. So <laughs> this is my summer holiday. So um, yeah. So yeah, I have two over there, and at Rock Camp I only have also this term. I only have two students because I didn't really didn't want to take on anymore because I I just want to take it easy for the rest of the year and just work a little bit. And um, but with Rock Camp I also work, you know, in the office. So I'm also there to planning all those camps and yeah, our how the year is gonna be and what we're gonna do and yeah we have events coming and stuff like that so so i 
I'm more into actually over there to to organize stuff instead okay. of just giving lessons. How this uh, rock camp uh, start? Well, it, it was a long time ago. It was just it was many years before I joined. Uh, uh, Satu, uh, our boss, she started it in two thousand nine, and it started off as only camps during summer. So there was like like two one week camps every summer, and uh, then uh, some uh, a couple of years later now that when I joined in, I think it was twenty twenty when I joined. So I've been there for for three years. And um, 2021, I'm not sure, <laughs> I need to check. But yeah, uh, then, you know, after a while we have, we did some camps and we did this kind of like online lessons and stuff like that. And then it sort of evolved into this full-time school that we have now. Okay. It's a, a really nice project. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are many artists involved in it, so. Yes, definitely, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, time because, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> there's so many young people out there that uh, want to want to play music, they want to play like rock and metal. So um, it's nice to sort of give something back. You know, I, I wish I would uh, have this when I was younger. I would have been so into it when I was like 15, 16 to do something like this. But yeah, so it's really cool that I can give something back now. Yeah. It's really nice. But uh, let's talk about uh, metal in general. How did yes. you get into metal music? What was the first, when was the first time that you hear metal music? Oh, that, that's really hard to say because I don't really know what we're going to call metal here. But, <laughs> you know, I, I, well, I the, a... the, the, the closest, closest thing to metal, let's say at the beginning, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I come from a family where they where we listen to music like all the time. So I grew up to like listening to my dad's records, you know, like he he's kind of this like rock and like prog guy. So we listen to a lot of like Pink Floyd. We listen to uh, Led Zeppelin. There was uh, Rolling Stones, Beatles around all the time, you know. And uh, so I grew up to this kind of like rock music and and at some point, you know, when I was uh, six, six or seven, uh, the, the I, was, I sort of had this change in in my music taste because uh, there was the video for uh, Alice Cooper's song "Poison" came out in in uh, saw it like in yeah, which should be eighty eight. So uh, I was six years old, and uh, and then something clicked, and I really I wanted to go into this kind of music. So. Uh, so I bought the album and I, I listened to it a lot, you know, a lot there in the end of the of the eighties, and uh, then it evolved and I started listening to like Scorpions and and White Snake and stuff like that, and uh, Black Sabbath, and and from there it evolved and and uh, yeah, and then then it just got like more and more extreme all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I think that it's normal that, you know, yeah. most of people start with uh, something more rock and then you go on and on and you start to listen to more extreme and uh, exactly. then you find you in the in the place that you listen a bit of everything. But uh, of course, everyone has its own favorite uh, kind of uh, music. Uh, yeah. What is your favorite um, kind of metal is it black metal or no i don't really well it used to be i used to be a really huge like black metal guy i still like my black metal though and uh but yeah well probably i would say some black metal is probably one of my 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 favorite things but but then of course i like a lot of like old school death metal as well and there's all other kinds of interesting metal stuff in there so so yeah, but I, I really, when I was uh, when I was a teenager, I really went into to black metal when I was like 14, 14, 15 something, and uh, for many years I didn't listen to almost anything else. So yeah, it's been a hu huge part, you know, yeah. in, in my sort of like the, the influences that I have. 
there is any kind of music that you really don't like that when someone put on you are like no <laughs> <laughs> yeah um uh, i listen to like almost everything that's uh i've I sort of laughed today when I went to this uh, vinyl flea market over here, and I came home with a lot of different things, and it was yeah, it was everything there from uh, from dissection to to Kraftwerk was in in my 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 pile of vinyls that I bought. But um, but yeah, if so, I, as I said, I almost listen to anything, but for some reason, I I don't like reggae. I don't know why, but yeah. There's something about reggae that I I cannot do. <laughs> I think is uh, I I don't know I I feel about reggae like tiring. I I don't know. Yeah. It's like uh, yeah, <laughs> I I I can listen to one song, but uh, yeah yeah I can I can I can relate on the on the reggae. I, yeah. I never think about reggae because it's something that. Uh, I don't listen, and no one around me listens, so I forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it's it's yeah. That's sort of like the only the only thing that I I don't really like. Okay, there's there's a lot of bad music in in the pop scene nowadays, and over here, this yeah, in Finland, there's this Finnish pop sort of trend right now that I cannot stand i have no idea but yeah so uh, i i don't i i actually like pop music but it's usually older pop music you know <laughs> A yeah. 80s pop is, is is one of my favorite pop genres yeah. if you can call it like that if you can call the 80s a genre but yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah i i don't know about I was thinking about a, a Finnish pop because I at work I have the the radio on and they are playing uh, about everything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, but I think that they play more like uh, older stuff. Yeah. On the, on the radio that I'm listening, so I have no idea what's going on on the on the Finnish pop. Uh, I don't. I don't really listen. Oh. To radio yeah, I, than, uh, more than uh, at work i normally listen to spotify and i listen to to the things that i like <laughs> yeah exactly so, yeah yeah me me too <laughs> that's what you feel but, i do or 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 i go to my to my to you know my shelves somewhere yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah and uh, i know that uh, for example in italy every time that someone uh, share some video on facebook uh, and i'm like what's this and then i check and it's uh, only auto tune um, yeah I, I don't know what's going on but i don't like and they <laughs> sound all the same all the same yeah exactly yeah it's so annoying no, it's a, yeah it's, uh, it's terrible and yeah the auto tune kind of that it, people use it as an effect nowadays and you know back when it was invented you know it was so supposed to just like be a little bit of help to correct the, the vocals but now people use it like 100 percent, and it's like mm. you don't really know if it's like if it's a synth or is it a guy singing you know <laughs> yeah yeah and then if they have no auto tune they they are unable to sing pretty much <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's quite sad <laughs> it, it definitely is yeah but yeah if people like that well <laughs> it's not yeah. a problem of mine <laughs> yeah no exactly they, they can listen to whatever they want yeah but uh, uh what's the best metal album in your opinion oh this is really hard i have no idea because i i always change my favorite albums it's every it's, day is, a new, in an, is another yeah one. exactly yeah exactly it's uh it's you know it's up to to my to the mood. <laughs> okay, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and talking about live uh, music, what was your first uh, gig? The fir the first band that you saw live? Um, well, I was when I was younger. I was on my dad's gigs and <laughs> watched my dad play. But uh, yeah, so 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 that's yeah. My first gigs was me watching dad play but uh, if you 
if we don't count that one, then it was Europe in in 1990, I think, in in Kokkola here in Finland, they played. Okay. It was the yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. That's my first gig, and I can still remember some of it. So <laughs> it uh, it was probably a good gig. Yeah, nice. And what's the band that you are uh, more into nowadays? There is a band that you are feeling more. Uh, this is also something you know that that really Change really every day. yeah every every day changes around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. I I get these kind of like periods with uh, like with music that I that I listen to. So uh, for example, now I I actually have sort of a, like a black metal kind of um, phase again. I didn't listen to black metal for five seven years almost in between so um yeah so i have this black metal phase going on right now sometimes it can be like a really like electronic phase sometimes sometimes i just want to listen to like um some kind of ambient stuff sometimes it's it's more doomy sometimes uh, it's stoner kind of music and sometimes it's just like uh 70s prog music you know yeah. so it, it, it's it, it's it changes all the time yeah i think it's it's really important for everyone to listen to different kind of music and yeah then uh, you know th there is the time when you get stuck on a certain album and you are listening to that album all the time in a loop mm -hmm. and then at some point uh, you change and get back to maybe something older or to something that you were listening when you were like uh, 14 years old and it's yeah. really different. So yeah. it's, uh, that's, that's the beautiful things about music. I think that uh, you, yeah, can, yeah. You, yeah. you can listen to everything and cha change yeah. day after day what, what you want to listen. Yeah. According Definitely. to your mood and uh, how you feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now let's go to the question from your fans. Uh, yes. So let's take now just uh, one from here because the other ones are uh, about Pete and we are going uh, later to talk about that. That <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's really important. It's the most important part of the interview. <laughs> yes, of course. But uh, there is uh, Maria Jotnar, and uh, she asks, uh, uh, can you name a couple of must-visit metal festivals in Europe? Oh, yeah. Um, must-visit festivals, yeah. Sadly, uh, sadly, the Metal Days is not anymore. Well, it is, but it's in a new place, and I heard it's not that good as it used to be, so sadly that happened. So, uh, so we crossed that one off the list. Uh, one of my favorite festivals is called uh, Brutal Assault in in uh, Czech Republic. Uh, it's like one hour with a train from Prague, and uh, that's a really cool festival. Been there three three times, I think, and uh, yeah, I really love it. Uh, a new must visit festival in my opinion is actually in norway it's called meat guts blood that was a really cool festival it was uh all kinds of music over there it was from everything was a little bit like folky kind of things but there was all, all like everything from really 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 folky folk music like traditional to, uh, folk to yeah exactly extreme to, folk. Exactly to this kind of like enslaved kind of styles and uh, yeah and also there were a lot of black metal there and uh, and also a lot of this like pop music with a little bit folky influences. It was a really cool festival, really nice place and a really well organized thing with a nice feel to it. So that's also one that I really recommend. Um, yeah. Um, then. Uh, I think you know if if also if you are uh, a visitor, I think Hellfest will probably be pretty good. So Hellfest is is really big and it's 
it looks really cool and yeah so if there's a chance to go there because they also have really really big bands but they also have small underground bands so uh yeah there's something for everyone at least those i would say yeah yeah i think that it's a good list and they're really interested yeah. in, the, in the that one from norway the folk yeah one. Yeah, I, was I, there I, I like the when the folk is mixed with uh, whatever genres. So yeah, I think yeah. that I have to check out that. So thank yeah, you for definitely. the question. Uh, who was who was the <laughs> Maria? <laughs> because it was a good one. And then yeah. let's go to the random topic with my jar. So let's yeah, see. Right. We're going to to get as first topic. <laughs> Let's right. hope it is not one that come. That there are a few that come all the times, and I'm like, I don't want to talk about those things anymore. <laughs> but let's <laughs> see. The first one is uh, okay. This one is a new one. The first time, so air and uh, bird. 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 I cannot say beard. Yeah. Beard. What? Air and beard. So you have long hair, and metal community is. Uh, about uh, mostly long hair. How do yeah. you take care of your hair? <laughs> let's, let's go with <laughs> a stupid question. <laughs> All right. Yeah, here we go. Uh, well, I I don't really know. It's it's just hanging there. It's <laughs> been there for for a long time. Um, I I don't really care, take care too much of it. I cut it twice every year. Try to to wash it three times a week at least. And yeah, uh, pretty much. I, that. Yeah, for, that's that's what I do. <laughs> if if you ever thought to, you. to cut all off, no, <laughs> I actually never thought about doing it. So, uh, well, when I was um when I was uh, in the seventh grade, I started to growing my hair out, and uh, then I cut it on the ninth grade actually and I really I remember I was so like afterwards I was like why did I do that because I had I had maybe like like this long hair back then and I was like yeah I, I just wanted to get rid of it and yeah I, you know after that I was like why did I cut it because I would have been really long you know quicker <laughs> yeah. but yeah yeah but I never 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 thought about cutting it afterwards yeah but you know, it's uh, always I think about a guy with long hair. No one take care really. In a, in a way, yeah, not the normal care, but not an extra care. And sometimes you see on the stage those hair swishing all over, and you think how they have those perfect hair. And I think the secret is not using uh, extra extra things, but just. Uh, showering yeah. uh, washing the hair and uh, exactly i don't use any hairspray or anything so uh, <laughs> yeah i never use any any kind of extra products in mine it's yeah. just yeah but uh, at least you cut two per year i always say that i have to cut at least one per year but then uh, I don't know, times go by and I forget and then uh, yeah. I'm like ready to cut by myself. But then I remember that my friend that is a hard dresser, she maybe will cut my head off if I do that. So I try <laughs> always to control myself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just go. I try to now. It's actually I, I should have cut it uh, two months ago according to my schedule. But uh, yeah. But yeah, so I need to go soon to cut it. Yeah. But let's get to another topic. <laughs> let's yes. see if it's something something that gives us more more questions. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. This one. School. And school is, I think, the third time that it comes. So okay. did you like school when you were a kid? Well, uh, I'm not sure. Well, not really, but I didn't mind either. I, I, I was kind of this. I had really good grades, and uh, I, I did study a lot. So, uh, 
I guess in some some kind of sense, I liked it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And were you a good student? Uh, as, as you say that you had the good grades, I think that you were a good student then. Yeah, well, I had really easy to learn when I was younger. So uh, so I didn't really have to to read that much for like tests and stuff like that. So, so I, I, I was kind of happy with that. So and also I had like a, always had a sort of like a, a mind for for maths and languages. So mm -hmm. uh, that probably also helped. Yeah. Well, I, I was a really bad a student. I was in my <laughs> ward. I have no idea what the teacher was saying. I remember that I was in my in my dreamy words of thinking, uh, I don't know about what. <laughs> and then the teacher was saying, did you understand? And I was just nodding my head yes but i had no idea <laughs> what they talk about all the hour but yeah what was your favorite class oh i really you know it, it was sort of it sort of changed you know because when i was when i was younger when i was like uh, i don't know what it's called uh when i was like in the first grades to maybe the the third the fourth grade i really liked history and uh, and religion it was cool to hear all these these stories about what has happened before you know but uh then as i got older you know the, all those like history lessons they were all about learning dates of when you know this and this and this and that happened. So, so then I, I stopped liking it because it was just like learning. Yeah, as I said, learning dates and years. So, um, so I, then I uh, later I, I found like psychology and philosophy and th that I really went into instead. So uh, yeah, okay. so it, it changed quite a lot during my time that I studied. Yeah. And what was the one that you didn't like? Oh, well, as I said, I didn't like that. That was where you had to learn a lot of dates. Um, so the story was something that you like and unlike. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, well, when, yeah, the lessons I, I didn't like when it uh, was Finnish. I I didn't like to, to study Finnish. That was, that was, in my opinion, that was the worst thing you could study yeah i th i think that uh, uh I'm, I'm italian and for me studying finnish uh, as an adult was uh, like the best thing ever <laughs> but uh, when i was at school and yeah. the italians thinks italian grammar who who i i was <laughs> the, <laughs> i was so bad that i think that my teacher was crying every time that she was reading something that I wrote but uh, yeah uh, I didn't get better and uh, I think that uh, whatever language I take I I do mistake I I don't know maybe I I'm I have some some dyslexic uh, things or some, <laughs> some, something going on I don't know I never been I have never been tasted so but uh, yeah I can relate on, on the on the language the yeah, that that can be not the most interesting <laughs> when you are. Yeah, active. exactly. And yeah, exactly. You know, then you was you were forced to learn something. When I got older, and you know, I could choose what I wanted to study. Then I, of course, I I loved, for example, to to study like uh, English later on. You know, to go really deep into to the English language. That was really cool. But then I also chose to 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 take a lot of like extra English in, into my okay. curriculum as well. Uh, you know about uh, English. Also, I was, uh, I remember at school, uh, uh, I started to learn English at school when I was 11, before we <laughs> had French. So then we yeah. changed and I had no idea about English because no one in my family speak English. So <laughs> I was like, I hate English. I'm never going to talk English. And here I am. <laughs> I also <laughs> I also did the the bachelor degree in English, so I wrote my thesis in English, all the exams in English. 
<laughs> it's just fun yeah. to think about uh, yeah. me as kid and then what changed in as had mm. but uh, what did you study after the after the the basic school what did you go to study after basic school i i continue i don't know what it's it's called because it's in in Finnish we may call it Lukio, so that's like the uh, it's the high school. Yeah, sort of high school, but it's a little bit in, beyond in high Asian. school because yeah, it's yeah. So it's it's something uh, it's something in between, you know, for those people that don't know you know the Finnish school system. It's something like a little bit like of end of high school, beginning of college times, quite sort of. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, I went there, and then I I was thinking about going to some university to study, but then uh, I found I found uh, sound engineering, and then I I totally changed my direction, and I went to study sound sound engineering instead. Okay, did you study something else uh, during these years? You know, during life uh, you can take some small uh, course just yeah. to oh yeah no i actually did not do that but i i went after i studied sound engineering i actually went to uh this uh, what it is called i don't know really but like upper school uh, to get myself uh, a, a degree in um uh, in uh in media but i I did not finish it because it was not what I wanted. It was sort of focusing on the on the wrong things for me, you know. So, so I didn't. I was there for like one and a half years, and then I, then I quit. Uh, then I didn't do anything for for twenty years, almost seventeen years, and until actually last year when I got uh, my degree finished. Actually, <laughs> okay. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So now I actually have a, an occupation nowadays. Yeah. Okay, nice. But now let's move to the the most important topic, pizza. Of course. Do you yes. like pizza? I do. I yeah. do. Let's also take the, the question. So let's see, because there are questions that... So one of the questions that normally I ask is also here and it's again from Maria and she asked what is your absolutely favorite kind of pizza <laughs> yeah and this is this is the same thing same answer I'm gonna get as I did with the favorite band and the favorite music genre and, and stuff like that because this is also something that changes all the time uh right now I'm really into uh, to pizza with um with seafood also for example it's uh, something I'm I'm a really like big guy when it comes to like fish and shrimp and stuff like that. Anyways, because I'm I'm raised you know on the sea, and um, I was fishing when I was a kid all the time and 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 so on. But so yeah, um, so yeah. Right now it's it's some kind of uh, seafood pizza is probably my my favorite right now. But you know when you get a really really good basic margarita, that's yeah, that's that's something really good. Yeah. Some sometimes you know the simpler the better. Yeah, that's true. Then there is there was another other two questions about pizza here. Uh, <laughs> about and it's always Maria in this question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where, in your opinion, can one hit Finland's best pizza if you are unable to get to Korvgorans? Uh, where shall sh where sh shall you go? <laughs> they, they, yeah, that's a, that's a grill in in uh, my hometown, okay. um, and they don't do pizza, so yeah. Um, <laughs> so I don't really know what the, that was about, but yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure. There's, there's there's some really good places in Helsinki. I cannot really say because I have not tested that much pizza in Finland actually because usually on on tours and uh festivals and whenever you're on concerts you know you you get pizza and uh when you get home and you have a little bit of a hangover or something then you also order pizza so <laughs> so uh 
I usually don't go looking for pizza places because I get enough pizza already as it is. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, then there was another question, and uh, this was uh, uh, Sophie and uh, Imesha. If I'm mm -hmm. sorry if I pronounced wrong. Um, if one had to make a pizza for actual trolls, uh, Finnish or otherwise, what toppings would you recommend? This troll is a gog to know. <laughs> okay. Uh... I reckon they would eat some mushroom pizzas, right? Yeah, it makes uh, sense. I, yeah, I think so. I, th I think that would be a, a fungi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, where? Maybe some rabbits on it as well. R rabbit and, and mushrooms. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Does it yeah. exist with a rabbit meat pizza? Hmm. Yeah. Rabbit and mushrooms. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that's a, you know, it's a classic combination with rabbit and mushrooms. So, so why not on a pizza? Yeah, yeah. So, quite interesting. So maybe someone that is uh, watching this interview can write down and uh, suggest to some pizzeria to try. Yeah, exactly. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. To do the Finkroll pizza. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. In Helsinki, there's this city rabbits that you can, yeah, I think you can hunt them like one day every year, and it's uh, because there's so much of them in the in the city center. So maybe they could uh, make pizza out of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so don't waste the meat. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, where did you eat the worst pizza ever? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's. Uh, I'm. I'm not really sure, but I'm pretty sure it, it was in Italy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I actually never had a good pizza in Italy, so, so really? that's something. No, I I haven't. Uh, you know, because it's it's usually it's it's some kind of backstage pizza, and they're gonna probably take from the from the. You know the cheapest place they can yeah, get pizza from. Probably anyway. from so, one um, kebab place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's it's gonna be something, probably from from some kind of yeah yeah where it's really cheap. So, so yeah, I'm uh, really hoping for one day to have a good pizza in Italy. Yeah, yeah uh, maybe maybe someone can suggest you some places to go. Yeah. If you are going there, someone can write in the in the comments when they know that you are on tour. And you have to go in this pizzeria because it's the best. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I need to people, do that. you know what to do. Yep. <laughs> I'm up for this. <laughs> and uh, where did you eat the best pizza ever? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been thinking about this. I've actually talked about this, uh, not, not in interviews, but uh, with friends and stuff like uh, about pizza. So, uh, I had this really like happy accident uh, in uh, in New York. Uh, it's it's a long time ago, 10, 12 years, something. I was walking around and I, I sort of got lost in, <laughs> over there. And uh, I, on my way back, I, I got really hungry. And uh, there was this, it was just like a corner between two streets, you know, but between like the street and the avenue. Uh, and it had like a really small place and they had pizza slices for like three dollars or something. They were huge, the pizza slices. And they were and I I ordered two slices over there and it was so good. I don't know if it's if it's because I was really hungry or if it was just like the most amazing pizza I've ever had, but it, it was it was really, really good. Yeah. Well, Maybe yeah. someone from New York can say which kind, which which place was it? Do you remember <laughs> which place what was? No, you don't. I, no, I don't remember what the name. Maybe was someone can just uh, guess uh, what what place was <laughs> and uh, tell us if it's uh, a really good uh, place or or if. Yeah, it it was it was kind of close to uh, the the Grammar City Theater, but there was probably about. 20 pizza places you know around there just like within like three minutes walking distance you know there's pizza everywhere in new york but yeah that was it was really good pizza it was it was perfect slice of pizza 
Yeah. And now let's go to the most important question of this interview, because this interview uh, is around this question. Everything that we talked was not that important as this. <laughs> the, wor the world is divided into pineapple on pizza, yes, and pineapple on pizza, no. So uh -huh. what's yeah. your opinion of on this uh, topic uh, about pineapple? I'm going to just show belong to pizza? Yes, belong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I really not, like Yeah, I'm not surprised because uh, I think that uh, most people in Finland uh, uh, would answer yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's so, uh, I I really like it. You know, I, I also like pizza without pineapple. You know, but you know, I I think it's it's got its place. You know, if you have the right thing to to pair it with, if you do it the right way, then it's gonna be really good. You know, because I like I like to have really strong blue cheese, and if you wanna, if you would just put like really strong blue cheese on a pizza, it would be so salty. You know, and uh, you put like ham or, or pepperoni or something that is also salty. So I think the pineapple really sort of works to to balance, okay. the, you know, the saltiness of the pizza. So that, that's why I like it. I also do uh, a lot of other weird things. For example, one of the other pizzas that I was thinking, like, was it the best pizza I've ever had? It was actually in Indonesia. I went to a restaurant that I I was, I didn't think when I went there that it would be a pizza place because it looked like a fancy sort of um steak and, and yeah seafood and yeah and but they actually had a lot of pizzas over there and i took this pizza with uh with caramelized apples and blue cheese and it was really okay. good as well yeah so um uh, so i i what also was like that, to... was this with uh with the tomato base or without the tomato no it, it was tomato base yeah okay yeah. I just so, sometimes... was thinking uh, someone comment uh, on my mm -hmm. last uh, interview, or maybe it's going to be the previous interview for this, uh, with a comment about uh, about uh, fruits on pizza. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, it was try pizza with apples or pears with gorgonzola, white pizza, yeah, exactly. not tomatoes. So th this yeah. is coming from Italy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I, I just answer no fruits on my pizza. But I'm like, uh, <laughs> if it's not on my pizza, everything can be on the pizza. I'm I'm fine with yeah. my margarita with olives. And I know that many people don't like olives. And I'm like, I can eat uh, olives all the time. So Yeah, me too. Me too. I love, I love olives. So that's also something that I think really belongs on pizza as well. So it's yeah. really good when you put like a, with like ham and olives on, on a pizza. That's yeah, perfect. and I really like uh, uh, olives and uh, ricotta cheese on the pizza. Oh, oh yeah, because oh yeah, sounds good. Really good because uh, olives are stronger. If you take uh, those Kalamata kind of olives or yeah. some other black olives, and yeah. they are they are re really tasty. And then you put ricotta and it. It's creamy and uh, soft, and uh, yeah, it, <laughs> it, it balances. Yeah. So uh, yeah. may, maybe the, the the thing about uh, the pineapple is that I just don't really yeah. care of pineapple. <laughs> I maybe don't don't really like also. I I I may eat pineapple like this, but it's not something that I will buy. So that's maybe yeah. the thing that makes me think that I don't want. But I know that, uh, was it in Sweden that they put uh, banana and yeah. uh, strawberries? Uh... I I was just going to say that I tried once uh, pizza with banana and I, that I didn't like. That, that was not good. Uh, that, was, that was strange. Yeah, I think that the banana is maybe too too smooshy yeah maybe yeah, I, probably, I, yeah. I don't know i i don't know but <laughs> i don't i think that i i cannot think about the banana on i can no, no, no. i i almost can think about every every fruits on the pizza not not for my pizza but 
yeah it may it may make my uh, it it may make sense yes. but yeah not not the banana and something that when, I, when i moved to finland that was the weirdest thing for me was uh, the uh, the the peach on the pizza yeah. was like what what peach because it's the one in the packaging the uh, not the, the in the syrups so it was like um, quite weird and I didn't <laughs> taste that. I think that I may have tasted the pizza with uh, pineapple, but I think that I put the pineapple away. It's something yeah. that we do with a lot of food. If there is something that I don't like, I just take off and I eat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have to say that the peach pizza is good because uh, here where I live in San Aoki, there's, uh, there's a place that makes this... Um, uh it's uh, a pizza with uh, with blue cheese and it's got peach and it's uh i usually put shrimp as well and then there's uh, curry sauce on it and it's, okay. it's really good. so there is a lot of <laughs> a lot of things going on in that pizza <laughs> yeah it definitely is it's one of the one of those with like yeah that's it's four toppings so that, that's quite yeah. a lot I, I usually don't like that many toppings i usually stick with like two that's uh, like sort of because I, I really want to taste the pizza itself. But with this one, it's so strange that, you know, this is I, I don't really think of it as a pizza in, in that kind of sense. It's not definitely not an Italian pizza, but, um, but, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's a good one. I, I like it. Yeah, I, it's nothing that you enjoy. I, and that's the point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, order, I order it uh, two or three times every year. Okay, yeah, but we are at the end of this interview. So thank you so much for uh, being a guest for Metal Pizza. It was really a pleasure to have you here. Um, would you like to say something to your fans? Oh, it's been a cool interview today. And uh, of course, uh, if uh, <laughs> if I'm around in your city and you have a really good pizza place, you know, <laughs> send me a message. And uh, let's have pizza. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>